Good morning. This is Erica with Launching Legacies. This is our daily devotional in which we're going to continue our discussion um, about my process of maturing in faith. And so today I want to talk about partnership because you all are probably thinking, okay, Erica, we've talked about you getting along with God. We've talked about you establishing a relationship with God and that's great. But what about the other people? And it's always um, the question I get when I do counseling, when I do trainings, they're like, okay, I get it. You, you, you're working with the Lord, you're establishing your identity in Christ, but then these other people are going to be a part of the equation. And how do we manage the other people who don't seem to be interested or they have these different dynamics going on? And that was, that's where people really get tripped up is where other people do need to come into the equation for you to do the work that you do. So if you're not familiar with Launching Legacies, let me briefly tell you what we do. So we do life coaching. Um, we do family education, which means um, parenting classes, parenting intervention, parenting advocacy, uh, or, you know, child advocacy, um, and then we do, um, and then we do biblical counseling, which is a part is a counseling method that requires uses the Bible as the final source and so we're using all of these different strategies and approaches to work with of course people so then there becomes the question of you're well you're maturing in your faith and then other people need to come in how do you work with that and so the key is partnership Right. And you're like, well, no, I already understand that you're going to tell me that we partner with God. And I am going to tell you that we partner with God because that's important for you to understand. But I'm also going to tell you that I look at every single client that I work with, every family that I work with as also being another type of partnership with God because they're trusting God to do some work, right? We are faith-based. We're not uh, very transparent about the fact that we are faith-based and that we're relying on God for the answers to these relationship um, problems and these social problems. And so when a person or a family comes to work with Launching Legacies, what we believe, what I have learned to believe is that they are choosing in, in that choice to come to Launching Legacy to be a part of a partnership that God is established. God and I have established that launching Lexis belongs to him. I'm going to do what he tells me to do. Remember, we talked about the bank account. He's putting new things in every day, so I'm relying on him daily. So he and I have this relationship in which I'm dependent on him, and that's how our partnership works. I do what he tells me to do. Now, when this other person comes in, they're coming into an organization to work with an organization that belongs to the Lord. And so in that, they're deciding then to be in partnership with God according to his will and that's what I believe and you're like well, maybe maybe they are maybe they're not well that's what I choose to believe because of the scripture it says um, that for one, we shouldn't think that we're, what we're doing is so much more valuable than someone else, what someone else is doing, right? And so I, in order to prevent me from having a feeling of self-righteousness or self-importance and to recognize that this is just God's work and I'm just doing God's work, then any behaviors that I have to engage with, any personalities that seem conflicting, any difficulties that I would stand, I chalk it all up into partnership. I, I say to the Lord, Lord, I know that this person has chosen to partner with you otherwise we wouldn't be engaging them and launching legacies and so I thank you that you handle their partnership in the means of if their behavior is inappropriate if they're trying to be needy if they're trying to take advantage if they're trying to manipulate then I trust the Lord in my partnership with God that he will protect me from the harm that other people can cause and that he will uh, correct inappropriate behavior now he might give me a word to say to the person and that'll be gentle and kind because God God wants me to be gently in treating people, but he may not. He may just turn the situation around in my favor. And so I rely on the Lord being able to influence these other people as he sees fit because we are both in mutual partnerships with the Lord. And it's an interesting paradigm, but it's healthy because that means that when a person and I don't are not um, getting along or this person is doing something inappropriate toward me, I don't take it personal. I recognize that there's something deficient in their partnership with 
with God and I release them back to God to have that resolved. So it's not it's not about me. They're not disliking me or trying to mistreat me. That's that's not the case because I'm not important enough it within this decision making process and this you know going forth process for them to try to target me. I, that's not what's happening. They're not well. They're deciding to trust God to be well. And in that process, there may be some bad behavior. And so I let them be in partnership with God. And I respect that partnership as much as I expect my partnership with God to be respected as well. So what does that mean? When I'm doing something and a person calls it into question, I say, it's, it's okay. I've been talking to the Lord about it, right? As long as I have been talking to the Lord about it. And, and I feel like this is the best action to take. Now, they may not agree. And so then I leave it back to their partnership with God. And so it becomes this really interesting exchange in which it's difficult to be offended when you don't think of yourself as someone who is important enough in this exchange to be offended. Now, am I saying that I have no value? I'm absolutely not saying that. As a matter of fact, God, cherishes me he values me he thinks I'm important and that's why I can trust him to take care of anything that seems to arise as a difficulty God will take care of it he will resolve conflicts he will make peace he will set things in order sometimes he asks me to be a part of it and sometimes I have no nothing to do with it but he is establishing partnerships with people that's why they're choosing to work with launching legacies and not some other organization and in that choice in their decision to do that God is covering me because I'm choosing to obey him and so it just happens to kind of fit into the context of scripture really well and so that's what affirms or confirms that what I'm saying makes sense and, and that it works and so we're looking in the scriptures we'll find reference to this type of partnership work in 1st Corinthians the, the third chapter and if we start with the second part of the third of the fifth verse I'll read the whole fifth verse. Um, the fifth through the ninth verse will help us to understand this context. It says, after all, who is Apollos? So they're they're having a discussion about who is important in the kingdom and whose work is important. And they say, after all, who is Apollos? Who is Paul? We are only God's servants. Though uh, through him, through whom you believed the good news. So he's saying, we're, we're just servants of God. We're not anybody special. It says, each of us did the work the Lord gave us. And that's essential in partnership, right? It says, I plant the seed in your hearts and Apollos, Apollos, Apollos watered it, excuse me. But it was God who gave, made it grow. And so what? One man is planting, one man is watering, but God is giving the increase, right? So this is a partnership. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, God gave the increase. Now, it's not important who does the planting. That person's not important. I'm not by myself important as we're talking about this. And who does the and who does the the watering? Who does the planting and who does the watering? That's not important, right? I, I'm not important as an individual. This is about my partnership. And it's not important if my client, whoever comes, my families, whoever I work with, they're they're not essentially important enough for me to think of them as um, negative or positively impacting my life. We are all in partnership with God, right? He said, what is important is that God makes the seed grow. That's where the importance is. So we have a choice and so do everyone that we're in contact with. They all, Everyone has a choice. We decide, I'm going to partner with God. I'm not going to partner with God. If we decide we're going to partner with God, we give God the permission to grow things in our life. And that's how we look at relationships within the context of mature faith is that this is about a partnership. And so the important thing is that God makes the seed grow. Verse 8. The one who plants and the one who waters work together with the same purpose. What is that purpose? To fulfill the, the purpose of God in our lives, right? So if I am planting the seed and so-and-so is watering the seed and I'm believing that we're partnering with God, then our purpose is essentially the same. We're both trying to see the glory of God within the context of this family, within the context of this individual life, within the context of wellness. We're all working towards the purpose that God has set forth. And both will be rewarded for their own hard work, right? And so there, here goes. God is saying, look at Erica, you're accountable to me. This family is accountable to me. And as we do the work that we're assigned to do, God will say, okay, well done, thou good and faithful servant, right? <laughs> That's what he's going to say. He's going to say, you did what you were asked to do. So, for we are both God's workers and you are, and you are God's field. You are God's building. And so what is it saying? 
he's talking to the church because these people were both working, contributing to the church. And then he's saying, you were, are what was being edified and you were being built up. But in the same sense, we can look at that in any relationship. God has a plan, a plan and a purpose. He has it for the lives of individual clients I work with. He has it for lives of families that I work with. He has it for the lives of the people you interact with all the time, right? And where they are in this journey becomes less important than understanding that you are in an engaged partnership, right? You and God are in an engaged partnership and that partnership needs to be flourished. It needs to move forward, which means you don't have time to be offended. You don't have time to take things personal because it's not personal. It's about moving forth in this partnership and trusting that whomever you're engaging with is also moving forward in their partnership. And when you feel like they're not, or when you feel like there's an issue, when you start to take things personal, take it back to God. God and say to God, you know, Lord, I, I'm not sure if I understand this person's role in the partnership. I might be focused more on them than I need to be. Help me to understand what needs to be done or what needs to be said or what I need to understand about my position so that this can be well. Why? Because we have a purpose and God wants to see that purpose fulfilled. And so we can't take it personal. We need to recognize that this is just a partnership. I want to encourage you in this word because these relationships and interactions can be difficult. But if we can trust God, he will bring us through even the most difficult of circumstances and the most uh, unclear of relationships to a place of clarity and truth. Have a wonderful day. I will be praying for you that you would really recognize and embrace this idea of partnership and that you would grow in that place. Thank you. Goodbye.